Hi guys, this is Prashant, and today I'm just going to be walking through how to set up a basic 360 video player in Unity using our SDK. By the end of the tutorial, we should have a playlist in the form of a grid of thumbnails, and you'll be able to click on a thumbnail, and that'll essentially trigger a video playback for a video that you've uploaded to Spin Studio. I've already set up a Unity project here. Uh, I've just got a couple folders set up. I've got the scene, which is just containing our 360 video player scene, where we'll build the actual player. An images folder, where I'm keeping a couple uh, pictures I just found on my computer that we'll use for the thumbnail art. The Oculus folder is basically the Oculus platform, which you can download from the asset store. I downloaded this because I'll be using an Oculus Rift for this demo. And last, we have VRTK. So VRTK is an open source VR toolkit. I'm not going to go over a lot of its functionalities in this video, but in this project I'll be using it just for basic UI selection and pointing and whatnot using the Oculus Touch controllers. So now I'm just going to bring in the SpinPlay SDK. I'll put a link in the description pointing to where you can get the SpinPlay SDK. I'm going to import all. If you get a pop-up window asking you to accept some Unity project conditions for the SpinPlay SDK, go ahead and hit Accept All. Okay, so now that we've imported SpinPlay SDK and we have everything we need, I'm going to go ahead and remove the camera from the scene, just because we'll be replacing that with the VR camera rig down the road. And we'll add our canvas. And this will be our thumbnail canvas, which will be populated with all of the video thumbnails. Uh, since we're in VR, we have to make sure it's in world space, um, set its position back to zero, and scale it down. So that looks right. Next we can add the grid layout. This way every time we add a thumbnail to this canvas it'll automatically get put into this grid layout. And that's This cell size is basically the size of any UI element you'll be adding to this grid layout essentially the size of our thumbnails. Now we can add a button. We'll see the cell size reflected there. Now the canvas is backwards. There we go. And we'll call this thumbnail button. Sometimes to get UI elements to actually snap into the grid, yeah, uh, you have to just change uh, change some value in one of the grid layout properties. So now we'll add a thumbnail button script. The script will have all the logic for starting video playback when you click on the thumbnail. So I've already written the code for this, so I'm just going to paste it in. Uh, before going over the code real quick, I'm just going to... I'm just going to add the projector to our Unity scene. Uh, we also have to go to our layers and create the left and right layer. This is just for the projector to know uh, what to show to your left and right eye during video playback. And if you go to your projector, you can see here, just select left and right. You wouldn't normally have to do that if you had added the layers before adding the projector to your scene, but I did it in the other order. So. So going back to the script, the thumbnail button is getting the projector reference using a game object find, not necessarily the 
best way to get the reference to a variable, but I'm just doing it because it's easy for demo purposes. Uh, in the play video, we're basically using the video URL field and populating the projector's source URL right uh, here. This is the field that it would be populating, and that's what the projector uses to generate the media uh, to be projected in the Unity scene. Uh, after populating that field, we're calling projector.prepare, which basically uses the um, URL to prepare all the media, and then playback. So now the script looks good. We can, since we extended button or Unity UI button, we can remove the button component. And we just make sure the target graphic of the extended button is still the thumbnail button's graphic. Here I'm just going to make the pressed and highlighted colors a little more obvious. Just visually obvious. And we'll turn this into a prefab. So now that we've finished the thumbnail button, go ahead and add a script to th the thumbnail canvas called Playlist Manager. And this script will basically handle all of our uh, thumbnail instantiation onto the canvas. So I've already written the script as well. I'll just paste that in. And um, essentially at the top you can see we've got a public uh, variable for the prefab so that we can use that for instantiating the thumbnails. And then we've got a couple public lists for both the images that will be used for the thumbnails and the source URLs. So you don't necessarily have to do it this way. I'm just doing it all through the inspector just because it's quick for the purpose of this demo. I actually just had to replace the images with a couple different ones. Uh, I realized the images I was using were not, uh, I wasn't able to turn them into sprites to actually use them um, as the button images. But yeah, so now you can see here, I'm able to apply the changes and they're successfully turning into sprites. And now we can populate those, or populate the list, the thumbnails list in the playlist manager with those thumbnails. So I've already logged into my Spin Studio account and I've got a few videos here. I'm gonna use these couple of Hawaii videos that I have. One of them is just rendered in standard Equirec. And one of them is Diamond Plane. So yeah, just going over the script again in Awake, we're basically putting all of the list stuff into a dictionary and then putting all the dictionary uh, information into the thumbnail buttons as they're instantiated. Oh, yep. Yeah. so you forgot to populate the thumbnail prefab uh, public variable. So we'll just do that quickly. We can check what that looks like, and yep, so our thumbnails are instantiating fine. And we can see them both populating the grid layout in the canvas. Alright, so now I've set up VRTK in our scene. So as you can see here, we have the Oculus prefabs so that we're able to use its camera rig and use the avatar for the touch controllers. And uh, here on the right controller, we've set up all the pointer functionality. So we've got the pointer, and we've also got the pointer renderer, which is actually creating the line. 
And uh, on the canvas, we've got VRTK UI canvas, which is allowing us to collide, allowing the pointers to collide with the canvas and we can, so that we can interact with it. Uh, another thing to take note of is we turned off the camera rig in the projector just because it'll be turned on again once the projector is prepared. One thing to keep in mind is that if you've got a camera that's mainly there to interact with UI elements in your scene, for instance your canvas with the thumbnails on it, you'd want that camera to be off when the projector is being used to play back the video content and uh, vice versa. So if you're using the UI stuff, you'd also want the cameras that are doing the video stuff to be off. Just because if you have an unnecessary amount of cameras running in your scene, that can be a decent performance, especially on mobile platforms. Uh, but it's not as big of a deal in PC, so I'm going to skip that for now in this demo, but definitely keep that in mind. I did turn off the lock to HMD because in the Oculus Rift case we've got six off tracking, so there's no reason to lock the HMD at the origin. That would only be necessary for like mobile platforms and situations where you don't have full six off tracking. So now with VRTK all set up and the camera rig initialized the correct way, we'll go ahead and play the scene, see what it looks like. We're able to activate a pointer, which is all thanks to VRTK. And if we click on a thumbnail, which right now is just the A button for me, we can, we get video playback. Which is great, but we can still see the canvas on the screen, which isn't that great, so... We'll go ahead and create a game object called Canvas Controller and also create a script called Canvas Controller. Keep it near the thumbnail Canvas Game Object. Create a Canvas Controller script. And the purpose of this script will be to disable the canvas when we have video playback and to re-enable it when the player is done playing a video. So I've already written this script as well. So in this script we've got a public reference to the thumbnail canvas so that we can enable and disable it. We've also got a reference to the projector, again using a game object to find. But the important parts of this script are the on ready state changed and on reset events thrown by player. So by subscribing to the ready state changed event, we get access to a few different states of the player, including its preparing and ending states. So the preparing state is called uh, after the thumbnail button would use projector.prepare. So when that happens, we can set the thumbnail canvas false, which is during video playback. Once the video has ended, we call the player.reset player and we'll throw the player's on reset event, which we also subscribe to and, and turn the thumbnail canvas back on there. All right, so let's test it out. So when we start playing a video, the canvas disappears. So we're approaching the end of a video now. And when the player resets, we get the canvas back and we can start the next video. And the canvas disappears and we have playback again. So yep, so using our SDK makes the playback portion of creating a video player app really simple. You can easily create a video player with a playlist like we did just now, containing a grid of thumbnails, each pointing to a specific video in your Spin Studio account. I'll link this Unity project in the description if you want to refer to it at all. And I hope this was useful. Alright, thanks.